Welcome back to the sweatshop, boys and girls. Today we are working on a 2014 Fiat Lounge. This 500 Lounge is in need of a timing belt and water pump. So we're going to install a tensioner, new timing belt, and water pump on this thing. First thing we're going to need to do is open the hood. See that red tab there? Just move it to your left. And there you go, friends. That's where our timing belt lives on this side of the engine. Should be nice and fun. First step underneath the hood is to yank the engine cover off. There we go. Our next step will be to remove the air intake cleaner. There are a couple of hoses here that you gotta be kind of careful with and there is a clamp right there that you gotta take off. Uh, what I can tell you is doing this is gonna be really complicated. You've gotta take your time and really pay attention because there are many plastic lines like this and components like this that are not in the best position and are quite brittle. If you are familiar with working on Chrysler Fiat products, they're not really the best uh, in terms of quality. So you want to be really gentle uh, because you'll break a lot of shit if you go if you go at it like a gorilla. So make sure you take your time and do the best you can not to break anything. What we did to separate it was we took off this hose first initially, released these two clamps here and here, and then we removed the PCV hose, removing the 10 millimeter up here to release it, and then prying back on these two clips like this. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but there's a tab here and a tab where my middle finger is here. Push them back like that and just slide it back. For this hose to release it, I used a clip remover plier, which I don't know where I put now. That guy there, I just squeezed the two gray tabs on either side and then wiggled it back and forth slowly like that and then pulled it out. Flat screwdriver for the clamp here, obviously. And just be careful with these connections here. There's another one that's hiding on the back end there. That holes uh, one of these little hoses. You'll need an eight millimeter socket to get this guy off. Uh, it's just one eight millimeter and then it's kind of seized on kind of seized on here so you just got to wiggle it off nice and gently also the washer will fall off if you're not careful with it so be careful with this guy once you get that off i'm not sure what the book says but my next step is going to be to take this camshaft cover off and see what's uh, what's the deal and then our next step will probably be taking off that uh, belt there uh, that is the tensioner there i believe the that pulley right there where the tip of my screwdriver is uh, pointing to okay let's get to her Okay, so for your camshaft cover, there are two bolts that hold it. There is one long one that hides in this recess here, and then there is a short one that holds the top half of the bottom cover as well. Now, there is also this cable, this electrical cable that runs across the top of the camshaft cover. Uh, for whatever reason, that thing is clipped in there via these little tabs on the back of the cover, and it's... <laughs> It's in there pretty damn good. So I guess maybe they were tired of complaints of the wiring harness constantly coming out and rubbing on the engine and then destroying itself. So they overdid it in this time, I guess. So our next step here is going to be to remove that serpentine belt. Uh, best thing I can tell you about that is for your particular application, it may be different. I doubt it will be, but draw up a diagram so that you know how the belt comes off. That way you're not uh, running around like a chicken without a head later on trying to figure out what the hell you did. Also, I don't know what the change interval is for this exact okay, I think it was something crazy like 2,000 or 240,000 or something like that good thing we are changing it there are cracks in the belt that are starting to happen so we'll show you that a little bit later on okay let's uh, pull that accessory belt off now in order to get this belt off what you'll need is a 15 mil wrench or ratchet I like the extra long wrench type it's a mastercraft brand i'm pretty sure there's probably some other brand that makes the exact same thing they all come from china anyhow so get something like that or a ratchet you can fit one on there just make sure it's a shallow socket and then what you're going to do is you're going to set the wrench like this so pretend the crank pulley is here you're going to set the wrench like that pull it up like this and that will pull the tensioner down like so and then you can pull the belt off. Now, make sure you don't get it at too much of a deep angle because then when you release the tensioner, it's gonna wanna push the wrench down into the engine cover and then it'll get stuck. Now, just in case I haven't told you already, 
Um, I did not disconnect these little hoses because they have these stupid little clamps. You can disconnect it. I don't see why there's enough uh, holes here so you can just push the intake off to the other side there and you're good to go. So our next step would be up top here to pull the mount off but before we touch anything else up here we're going to the bottom side. So we're going to send the car up in the air, pull the bottom tray off and any other trays that may be blocking access to this area of the engine and then we're going to pull the hubcap off and the wheel. So with your wheel off you will be met with this plastic tray there is a phillips head here another phillips head there one down here somewhere there it is and then a 10 mil over here remove those and uh then we'll see what it looks like behind there uh, second thing is you can see that the lubrication joint that my customer goes to has been uh, slacking because uh, some of the screws are missing but that's okay we'll fix that up well boys and girls you can see here that we have run into the chrysler engineering department that is a view dead on and as you can see the air conditioning hose is currently blocking the crankshaft pulley out no yeah instead of running the line up against the frame rail or out of the way as normal people in the world would do things uh chrysler decided to put it right in front of the crank pulley so we are going to figure out a way, uh, this is a flex flexible portion here, it starts right about there where you actually need to put the socket on to get to the uh, crank pulley. Uh, there's your flex point there and that's the flexible bit there. Thanks Chrysler, appreciate it, idiots. The good thing is they make flex sockets and it is a relatively small bolt so I don't imagine we'll have an issue getting it off. I don't know whether I have to take those three bolts off first, uh, I think that's what I'll do from the looks of things. I think that's what holds the actual crank pulley in and then we will take the under tray off uh there's no point in me filming that because half the screws are missing so what you want to do is make sure that you take off the screws that are holding in your under tray all right let's do it okay so to remove the crank pulley you will need to pull out the three 13 millimeter bolts they are not tight at all probably like 20 foot pounds so yeah just crank them off pull the pulley off so it was just one 10 millimeter bolt that holds that timing cover in place i did end up disconnecting that connect there is the connector there I did not pull the harness or loom out of this cover what I did was because there's enough wire it's moved it off to the side and out of the way we can access everything now it's kind of hard to see on camera because that stupid hose is in the way and there's not much room to begin with there is the bottom of the water pump which means now our next step will be to drain that coolant off unless you want it in your face let's start draining the coolant from the radiator your next step will be to find out where the petcock is or the release valve for the coolant i don't know where the hell it is i can't seem to locate it let's go over here and take a look nope car is continuing to get stupider I don't see a way to drain the coolant out of this thing, so what I'm going to do is be taking the water pump off and letting the coolant drain from there. Um, I'm not going to mess with these connectors on the radiator because they can be troublesome and this one's not easy to access so not something that i would like to mess with i don't see a drain plug you can suck it out but i don't have the car down on the floor and i don't want to wait so what i'm going to do before i pull that water pump out to let the cooling system drain is i'm going to line this up with the appropriate timing mark i don't know what that is yet if i can't find one because there's too much dirt well it looks like i'm already going to it's just line it up here now best advice i can give you is to make sure that you mark the belt appropriately on the camshaft crankshaft and then in correlation to those marks you want to mark the engine so i'm probably going to line it up with that mark there uh, that little ear that's on the uh, oil pump with this line here and then i'll look at the top and see where the camshaft is situated or if i can find any markings there so let's do that now there are no identifying markers that i can see on the camshaft and there's nothing over here now there is a specialty tool where you have to take off the vacuum pump in the back of the engine and lock the cam you are more than welcome to do that it is the quote-unquote correct way to do it i'm not interested in doing it like that uh what i am going to do is do it my way which has never failed me so <laughs> down here you can see that little mark there that mark now correlates with this mark on the oil pump so what i'm going to do is draw a line there and mark the belt and then up top we will do the same thing we will mark the belt 
here somewhere and then mark the valve cover here somewhere so you can see we have marked our valve cover here and our belt as well as the camshaft the way i do it is i draw a line straight across from this tooth here to the valve cover and then i mark the two sections here of the belt that are cogged as well as the camshaft all in the front here is where you want to mark it i mark it in this fashion so that there's no mistaking that this is the camshaft marking i also put a marking here just so if somehow you manage to make a mistake or screw it up this is your check that's what i like to do on the crankshaft here you can see that there are two markings on the cog belt and then there's one marking there on the crank pulley and then on the oil pump so there is no screwing it up remember to rotate the engine so that it is tight on this side and if there is any slack it should be on this side that's where you want the slack adjustment to be this side for the water pump should be tight now if you're doing this on another engine you know what we'll cross that bridge when we do another engine now that we have marked our belt the next step for us is to remove the mount the reason why we're going to remove the mount is so that we can access the tensioner and then also pull out our water pump pulley in order to do this we'll need to support the engine now in order to support the engine you can get a brace that runs across the engine from this side to this side i don't recommend that because this is relatively flimsy and it probably will crack so what i'm going to do is get a jack with a piece of wood and place it under the oil pan make sure you get a nice big nice chunky piece of wood so that the wood doesn't crack and then the metal goes through your oil pan because it's aluminum and make sure that you don't put too much pressure on that oil pan overall because they're brittle and they can crack and if you do crack it it will really suck you can see that how I have supported it the piece of wood is not touching that section where the drain plug is uh, the neck of the drain plug you do not want to jack from that point because it's obviously going to be weaker there you want to get it on the flat portion of the oil pan with a nice piece of chunky wood this one here runs the length of the oil pan you can see that there that's how you want to support it then you want to put just a little bit of pressure so that it is supporting the actual engine when it is supporting the engine you can now release these three bolts here and then these three bolts here pulling the mount off once we pull this portion of the mount off you can then take a 13 mil i think it is and remove the bracket that holds the mount to the engine now once you release these three bolts you'll see the mount sag a little bit what you can do is with the jack adjust as needed to take the pressure off of the mount you do not want to have too much pressure because you can tilt the mount a bit too much and it can damage the rubber portion of the mount just be aware of that now with your mount out of the way you can go ahead and pull the bracket off off of the engine from what i can see there are four 13 millimeter bolts so just get a deep socket and crank them all loose so as you can see there are five bolts this one here is hidden on the underside of the mount so make sure you get this one and don't try to smash it off without taking this thing out because you'll damage something now with your mount bracket out of the way you can see everything our next step here is going to be to release that tensioner what you want to do is take note of where the tensioner guide is basically this is a an eccentric type tensioner so you're going to have to tension it by twisting it into the correct position so make sure you make a visual reference in your head about where that tab is then you just go back and set it to the same place you also want to see how much tensions on this thing of course yours is going to be stiffer because it's a brand new belt so go ahead and rip your tensioner off with our tensioner and belt off you can see that the mark has moved slightly for the camshaft that's because it has a little bit of tension from the springs inside of the head from the valve train so not a big deal we'll just crank it back by hand down below our crankshaft is in the correct position where we left it so we're good to go our next step is going to be to pull the 10 millimeter bolts that secure the water pump to the engine block if you're wondering it's a 13 mil so there are three bolts and one nut the nut is on the underside here of the water pump what i've done now is i have loosened that bolt just a bit what we're going to do is now take a pry bar and sneak it right down there between the water pump and the cylinder head and just pry back gently to break the silicone seal on the water pump and block between those two and it'll start to drain off nice and slowly as you can see there's a little bit more room on the top of the water pump between the block because i have removed this bracket it is held in by a 13 millimeter bolt that is hidden 
on this side here so basically it sits like this not the hardest thing to do what i did to get to that area is just sneak this guy up and out of the way put him to rest there on the valve cover and now we'll be able to pry between the block and the water pump to break it free surprisingly chrysler actually did or fiat actually did a decent job of holding this water pump in there essentially what i've done is just worked it back slowly and the seal is <laughs> it's still holding it in there so now with it in this position what you can do is just hold the pump back and let it drain off it's much easier to do it like this instead of just having it completely come out if it does come out fluid will go everywhere and it just makes a mess just make sure you got a big bucket or sort of drain pan there down below to catch all of this and be responsible don't dump it into the sewer you can take it to your local auto shop and they will hopefully dispose of it responsibly yeah in short don't be an idiot just keep holding it and let the majority of the fluid drain out in this manner and then when it starts to trickle down you can remove the actual pump let it drip dry and we're also going to lower the engine just a bit so that more of the coolant from the block comes out of it that way when we jack it up to the appropriate height there's no fluid coming out of the block so that we can clean the mating surface and then apply the new silicone without contaminating the surface with coolant all right I'm gonna keep holding this water pump here and letting this uh, stuff drain out because it's fun said no one ever after about five minutes of holding that pump you should end up with a situation like this where you have yanked the pump off and you have the fluid dripping what you want to do now is lower the jack so that more of that fluid comes out when you do lower the jack you only want to lower it a little bit so about an inch no more than two inches make sure that you keep an eye for the hoses or anything that is connected to the rest of the vehicle you do not want to strain hit or damage any anything so take your time if you're not sure about this sort of stuff get a friend to help you so that you don't screw anything up because if you do it's it'll suck our next step now is to let this thing drain off before we do anything else we're going to have to clean that mating surface now is a great time to peel all of that silicone off the best tool to do so is a scraper or a blade if you have one uh, we're going to make our lives a little bit easier by removing that stud we're going to need two m6 nuts to peel it off do not use the one from your engine this has a little bit of a washer and it's easier just to get two separate nuts so you don't damage this washer somehow we're going to put them on back to back and basically tighten them down on the stud and then remove the stud if you watched my head destruction video you will see how to properly remove studs if you don't have a stud removal tool by using two bolts unfortunately i'm not going to be able to do it on camera because there's really no room to film in there that's why most of this video is just me talking you through it so this is the method that you use to remove a stud you just put two nuts backing onto each other you put the face of one towards the block and the other one towards you and you crank them tight towards each other on the stud when you do that it will get tight on the stud and then you can just crank it off like a normal bolt. Uh, if you do what I just did, what you'll need to do is put some silicone on this bolt because the portion of the block where this stud sits is threaded right through and will have coolant drain up through there, which is kind of nice because it will take the coolant uh, level down lower than where your water pump seal is, but you'll have to seal it up. You don't want that thing to leak. So make sure you get it nice and dry and then smother it in some chili now get your favorite scraper and scrape all that silicone off of the block so it's kind of hard to see because i can't really get a good angle for you guys to see but you gotta clean all your silicone off you should have a nice clean mating surface that i have down there what i used to complete that task was a blade first scrape off all the chunks of silicone and then this cleaning cup from 3m works really well it doesn't take away any actual metal material or aluminum just the silicone so it should take you quite a while don't rush it it is extremely important because you do not want to take Take all of this apart again just because you slacked on cleaning it and now have a leak from the water pump make sure you take your time and clean it it's taken me about i'd say i don't know about a half an hour to scrape everything off once you do that your next step is going to be to clean any silicone or debris off of this these you can see there there is a little bit of loctite so what we are going to do is we're going to apply some silicone to this and then we're going to torque this bolt into the block after applying silicone to 10 newton meters it should look something like that don't be afraid to be generous
generous with the silicone. It's something that you need to be generous with. Now, one thing I did forget to mention was I did take a microfiber cloth and wipe down the surface with uh, brake clean. Make sure you clean off the surface before installing anything. And then once you get the stud installed and you pull those nuts off in the reverse process of the process that I showed you earlier, make sure you wipe off any excess residue or silicone that's there. Now, the next step is going to be to install the water pump. You can see here that there is a little bit of a valley in the water pump that I have. This kit does not include a gasket because it is not needed for this particular application. What you need to do is put a generous helping of silicone. What I'm going to do is put a layer around here as well as the mating surface here and then in this section, the little valley that's in the water pump itself. I'm going to be generous with it because there was quite a bit of silicone on this actual pump when we peeled it off. Then we'll go ahead and install it. Another word of advice, even though it is a brand new part, you could have touched it and put some contaminant on the surface where you're going to put the silicone or the manufacturing process could have left some contaminants. Do yourself a favor, wipe it down with brake clean just before you put on the silicone. You should have something that looks sort of like this. As you can see, there is about a one eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch in any given place on the water pump of silicone. There are two beads, one that's in the valley that was shown to you earlier and then one right by the neck or the section there where the impeller is. Uh, make sure you get a nice bead of silicone there as well. This should not leak as long as you make sure that both meeting surfaces were clean and the silicone bonds and adheres to the water pump as well as the block. Now key thing here if somehow you get the job buttoned up really really quickly you should give this at least an hour dry time. It does say for the particular silicone that I use you can use it in less than a minute. I'm not really into that. I, I prefer to give it some time to set up. This is the stuff that I use, the right stuff, because, I mean, it says right on the bottle it's the right stuff, so it can't be wrong, right? So, yeah. Permatex, I am open for sponsorship. I like your stuff. I've been using it for years. It's time that I stop paying too much money for this crap and that you send me some for free. All right, peace. Now remember when mounting the pump, this section here is the top portion. That's what you're looking at as you're putting it into the vehicle. And this section here is on the bottom. Don't screw it up or put it in backwards somehow. And in case it doesn't occur to you, make sure that you clean the silicone or any debris off of these bolts. Now, when tightening the pump down, what you want to do is essentially do not force the pump up against the block, squishing the silicone out. What you want to do is thread the bolts in nice and easily and slowly. Get all four of them in. And then as you get them in, you go around in a crisscross motion at first until it's a bit seated. And then go around in a circular pattern, just quarter turning it or whatever you see fit. Just do not snug the bolts up and don't tighten them. What you want to do is have the water pump made with the block surface in a slow controlled manner. When you get them to the point where they're all snug, then you can go ahead, get your torque wrench and then torque them. The torque spec for these ones are 10. So what I'll do is divide that by two and then just go up by increments of two. So I'm gonna start off at six Newton meters, go in a crisscross motion and then double check them, then go up to eight and then 10 and same thing, crisscross and the circular motion to double check. Okay, that's it. It's all torqued in there now. All we have to do is let it dry. In the meanwhile, what we're going to do is brake clean the area where the residue from the coolant is on the oil pump. You don't want to soak it in brake clean. What you want to do first is remove as much crap and dirt first by hand. So just using a rag with some brake clean doused on it and uh, scrape up whatever. Use a blower to dry up whatever crap is there and take your time and clean it. So after you spend a good amount of time cleaning this section and trying to get as much crap as you can off of the oil pump, you are now ready to set your belt up for success. What do I mean by that? Well, remember those marks that we put on the old belt? It's time to transfer them to the new belt. Before you do that though, you got to make sure that the belt is actually the same size. So you're going to do the stretch test. Unfortunately, can't show you right now because I have my camera in my hand. So give me a second here. So what do I mean by the stretch test? Essentially, you take your old belt and your new belt. You make sure you line them up against each other like this and you pull them like this. If they are relatively the same size end to end, then you have the right belt. What you're going to do now is take your favorite white marker. Where's my favorite white marker? Oh, fuck. Here, whitey, whitey, whitey. Where are you? I put you on the table. Oh, 
fuck. There you are. Yeah. What you're going to do first is identify the direction in which it rotates, if there's any specific direction. So what you want to do is just rotate the belt to see if there are any arrows. In this case, there's none. I like looking at the writing right side up. So what I'm going to do is trace my marks in the appropriate fashion. Offset the writing and then just copy like in preschool or whatever time in school you were taught to copy. Just copy. Once you copy the marks, you are now going to take a needle nose vice grip uh, very gently. This is only to secure the belt very gently. Just clamp them together like that so you know the belt hasn't moved or skipped. Now you can commence with tracing the rest of the marks. Be sure that you do not screw up the marks. An absolutely sure way to make sure that you don't screw them up is to count the actual cogs on the belt. <laughs> if you mess this up, you're going to have a really bad day. So don't screw it up. Now, once you put your marks down, do yourself a favor. Double check and make sure you put them down in the right place. Yes, it seems annoying and kind of stupid. But remember, if you somehow screw this up, you could potentially bend the valves on your your head and double check them like an idiot twice won't hurt your pocketbook bending valves will hurt your pocketbook and your back door so double check so for everybody wondering why it is the timing belt should be replaced you can see it there on camera that it is kind of cracked but when you really look at it you can see there's many more deeper cracks that are happening this will only get worse as it gets worse the belt will eventually decay to the point where it can no longer do its job properly and will snap so this one's got, I don't know, seven or eight years on it. And it's got, um, I think, 200 and... 60 odd thousand so it's a bit over just uh you know thank your blessings that fiat actually made a decent belt or a decent part that's kind of it's a low blow there jim come on now they're not terrible completely no they they suck uh whatever <clears throat> anyhow yeah so thank your lucky stars that fiat made a half decent uh timing belt uh unlike gm and those optras back in the day yeah Shout out to Opera for sucking balls. Okay, so that's why you replace your timing belt. So the next step for us here is going to be to put this bracket on. And when we put the bracket on, we'll then put the timing belt on afterwards. So one thing I will tell you about the bracket is it's kind of nice because you have one bolt. So there's only one bolt to take off. But when going to put it back, it does swivel in place a bit. So you want to try and line it up as square as possible so that it doesn't come into contact with the belt or anything else that it shouldn't contact. So so be aware of that. Also, getting the bolt in is uh, kind of tricky because, of course, you're feeling around in the dark trying to get the hole, which is not always fun. So take your time with it and don't drop the bolt because if you drop it, it's not going to be fun to find it if it doesn't fall out onto the floor. Our next step here is going to be to put the new timing belt on. Our goal is to line up the marks that we put on the camshaft and the belt in the same fashion. If you screw this up, give her up, but just find a cliff and you know all right well don't screw it up now when putting the belt on line up the belt with the appropriate mark on the camshaft do not worry about the mark on the valve cover because as i said before the camshaft has moved forward just a bit the next step for us is going to be to route the belt around the water pump and then the crankshaft use a vice grip with very little pressure just enough pressure to keep it snug you do not want to have any sort of indent on the actual belt if you do use too much force you'll damage the belt and could drastically shorten the life which will not be fun if you have a friend get them to hold the belt for you i have no friends unfortunately well that's not true they just don't work with me bastards now with the belt lined up to the appropriate mark you want to take a pry bar or anything that is soft and not going to damage the belt and just wedge it in there uh, we're not actually applying any pressure to the belt what we're doing here is just keeping that pry bar there so that the belt doesn't skip when we try to mess with it on top with the belt in this position and the pry bar holding it from the bottom we are now going to line this mark up we're going to get the appropriate socket or a big wrench and just turn the crankshaft back just a bit do not do not loosen this bolt because this shaft has no keyway so if you do loosen this somehow because you're some sort of gorilla you're screwed because now you're gonna have the fun of getting the tool to lock the camshaft and the rest of that crap and yeah life is gonna really suck so turn it back nicely nice and easy do not put too much force and then you can put the tensioner in prepare the belt 
for the tensioner by putting the belt past the tensioner stud as well as those two studs down there i know it was kind of confusing the way i had it so there you go and now with it like this what you'll do is put your finger here and then with a ratchet with your other hand you're going to twist this back slowly and then you can push the tensioner on it can be a little bit uh, of a challenge whatever you do take your time with it and don't use any metal pieces to try and wedge the belt uh, or wedge the uh, tensioner past the belt you'll damage the belt so just take your time you'll get it now for those of you with eyes that work you will see that i move the vice grip just to give myself a little bit more room to access this portion of the engine um, all you got to do is like i said twist this back and slowly work this in all the while pulling the belt on when you do get it past because it will grip of course and just work it into place before we actually set the tension what we're going to do is check the marks to make sure they haven't moved on the belt as well as the crankshaft the mark correlating with the valve cover is of course slightly off because we haven't tensioned it yet let's make sure that the belt is sitting on all the pulleys correctly and then we can go ahead and tension it we have everything together once you have the timing belt sitting in the correct position make sure you get a snap ring plier so that you can fit it into the two holes on the tensioner these two here the tensioner will sit like this before you tension it this essentially will point towards the firewall in the manual or the shop key manual it says to turn it down 90 degrees and basically have it point towards the floor uh, the original in this vehicle was slightly off like this and this is why i was telling you it was important to mark your tensioner to know where your tensioner sits we're going just a bit past that for our application this particular one sat like this got to give it just a little bit more and then we can tighten it down with a wrench when you have it sitting like this of course you'll have both hands free just tighten up the nut give it a little bit by a wrench and then you can torque it to the appropriate 21 foot pounds and then rotate the engine check the slack and make sure that it is not overly tight or loose and you're good to go now be sure to torque this to 21 foot pounds what you want to do is check the deflection it should be slightly tighter than what you originally had it at because of course the belt stretches a bit uh, just make sure you don't over tighten it next step for us now that we have it tight in the proper position is to rotate the engine make sure that everything is moving freely and nothing is binding up or we're hitting any valves and then we'll double check our timing again so as you can see our marks line up this actual cog here lines up with the mark that we made on the valve cover and the mark that we made down here on the camshaft sprocket as well as the oil pump line up make sure you turn the crankshaft to revolutions that way you will make one full revolution of the camshaft nothing should bind up if it does make sure you do not force it to go back off and check your timing marks okay so we are ready to put it in our mount the key thing here when putting in the mount is make sure that it is not sagged you want it to be as level as possible the same position that it is resting in now is the level that, that you want the mount to be in when you're running the bolts up if you twist the mount you can damage it use the jack to adjust as needed and make sure you clean this area up here so that the mating surface is nice and clean you don't want any debris that way the mount will sit nice and flat so just take your time, wiggle the mount back into place and make sure you line it up as best you can. You can use the markings that are essentially nice and shiny to help you line up. Basically the ones underneath the washer and you can see the position where the mount was crushed down on the bracket as well. Uh, for torque values, you are 20 foot pounds on these bolts that go to the block for this bracket. And then all the other bolts, all six of them are at 44 or 45 foot pounds. Next step for us is to put this guy here back into place and then put that crank pulley on make sure you put your timing cover back on the torque for the bolts on the timing cover are 80 inch pounds don't forget to plug in your oil sensor next step will be to put your crank pulley on there is a little nipple here that you got to be wary of there is a hole or cutout in the crank pulley so you can't screw it up this is that hole in the crank pulley right there where my orange glove is behind it uh, the bolts for the crank pulley are 20 foot pounds each bolt and 
There's my big old drain bucket. All right. So we have torqued our crank pulley, put the belt on and the shield. Now the last step would be for most of you out there is to put this shield back on. For me, it's not gonna happen because our shield is battered pretty good. So we're probably gonna end up sourcing a new one. Put your wheel back on, make sure you put some anti-seize and grease on the hub to make sure that it stays nice like this one. Good job, Mateo, look at that. I'll put some grease in there and keep that from rusting any farther. Put it down and we'll button up the top. Okay, up top here, what we're going to do is put this cover back on. Uh, the bolts that uh, hold the cover secure are torqued to 80 inch pounds. We're also going to push this thing back into place behind the uh, cover here in this little valley. And then we will put the air box back into place. Again, be very careful when sneaking this uh, air box back into place. The plastic is not the uh, toughest thing in the world this tube will break if you are overly aggressive with it don't forget the clamp and of course this little sensor down here don't forget the eight millimeter that holds it that is torqued to 80 foot pounds oh wait wait no 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 that little bowl is torqued to 80 inch pounds don't forget to clip these lines back in place and all the rest of that good stuff and the little connector that's hiding behind the air duct right here you can see the pigtail end of it that guy connects to that there and that's it you are good to go in terms of your air box then just put your engine cover back don't forget this bolt here and any other bolts you might have taken off for your particular model finally we are at the last step let's go ahead and fill this thing up with coolant use the appropriate coolant don't mix and match and all that stuff it's more of a pain in the ass than anything else or it can turn into one potentially it's just better to use what is recommended by the manufacturer make sure you do a 50 50 mix as recommended by the manufacturer Okay, so to this point, we have filled up the cooling system with about roughly two liters of coolant and about one liter of water. So we've got to squish another one liter of water in there. The only way we're going to do that is by bleeding the system. The method to bleeding the system now is to start the vehicle, let it run at idle. If you have a scanner, use your scanner to monitor the actual temperature. It is the best thing you can do because you don't want to run this thing hot and destroy anything. Thing. Also, what you're going to do is turn the climate control system all the way to the hot side and then put the air on one or two or whatever is comfortable for you. You just want to make sure that you have air flowing out of the vents to see whether there is heat actually coming through the heater core into the cabin. That's how you know you're not getting any really big air locks in the system. Top up as needed and do it the next day if need be. If it starts, you know you did the timing belt right. If it doesn't, well, let me know in the comments below. So we have bled the vehicle. You can see here currently it is at the max line. That's exactly what you want to achieve right here. Top it up if needed. If not, great. That's that for the Fiat, boys and girls. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. We will see you in the next one. That pulley right Oh, my hand's blocking it out. That doesn't help. Side piece of the under tray area. That will make no sense. I'm starting to fall asleep. It's fucking like 6 in the morning. Plus just the one bolt. Uh, I suggest that you take your time and... Uh, oh, it's recording. I'm wasting it. So it was just one ton mil... Stupid car. I do not see a way to drain the coolant out of this shit box on the camshaft or on the crankshaft, Jimmy. Down here, you can see that I look drunk on camera. Great belt on the camshaft or on the crankshaft. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's just start this all over again. Okay. You cannot mistake it. If you do, you should not be attempting this job. <laughs> You'll have a shh. Our camshaft. Oh, crankshaft. We're going to need two M6 nuts. Uh, M6 nuts? What the fuck's wrong with me? Chili cone at 10 meter me 10 meter meters. <laughs> now, when remember, oh, when remember, okay. And all four of them, um, uh, so it just would brag and hand. So for everybody wondering, when you're in, our next step here is going to be to put the dub. <laughs> the belt in this position, what we're going to do is get the prop appropriate ow fuck torque for these bolt oh put the earbags earbags stop rambling jim you're tired and hungry
That's that for the Fiat, boys and girls. If you found the video informative, fuck. <laughs>